Welcome to lecture 37, exercise 1. The challenge for this exercise is to write a program for a package delivery service. The program contains an array that holds the 10 zip codes to which the company delivers packages. Prompt the user to enter a zip code and display a message indicating whether the zip code is one to which the company delivers. So we kind of did an actual exercise like this in the la one of the last lectures. It's just asking us to enter in a zip code, and depending on the zip codes in an array, we'll just tell the user if we ship there or not. So basically, it's just seeing if it exists in the array. So if you'd like to try this on your own, go ahead and try it now. If not, I'm going to solve it. Okay, so let's start off by actually creating the array that's going to hold the 10 zip codes. Now, we could use either an integer or a string array. It doesn't really matter which one you use in this example. I'll just use a string array so you can kind of see it easier and we don't have to actually convert the number that's typed into a, an integer. So keeping it as a string will make it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and say string array and I'll say zip codes equals and now I'll give some zip codes 1000, 10,000 Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I just have 10 random zip codes um, that when the user types in a zip code, this is what we're going to check against. We're going to check to see if the number they type in is inside of this array. So these are the zip codes that the company ships to. These are the only valid zip codes. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually ask the user for the zip code and then we need to store that into a string. So I'm going to say console.writeLine enter zip code string code equals console.readLine. So whatever they type in is now stored into this variable called code. So then it says the last thing to do is to display a message indicating whether the zip code is one to which the company delivers. So we need to basically, like I said, scan this entire array. We need to scan it and see if the zip code that's typed in is somewhere in that array. So we need to basically do some kind of search. We need to check every single element inside of it. And through the lectures, we looked at two types of searching. We looked at a searching just using a standard for loop and, you know, iterating through it and checking every single one, one by one. It was like a sequential search. And then there was also a binary search, but we can't actually do a binary search in this case because it's not in order, our numbers, and we need to check every single one. So let's go ahead and use a standard for loop. It's going to go and check every single one, and then every single time it checks one, it's going to do an if statement to compare and see if the code is equal to whatever that element is. So we'll say for int i equals zero, as long as i is less than zip codes dot length, i plus plus. Now, every single time it iterates, I'm going to say if code equals zip code sub i. So zip code sub i is whatever i is at. It will access that element. So it will eventually access every single element. So if that is true, then I need to mark some kind of indication variable that says, okay, this is true. So let's create a variable that says bool found. And we'll say it's equal to false right now. Say that we have not found it. But if we did find it, so the code is equal to this, then we'll say found equals true. So that will, that's what the whole loop will do. It will go through every single element, checking to see if, it equal, if it's equal to the zip code that's typed in. If it is equal to, it will mark this found variable to true. Once that happens, once the loop is done checking every single one, we can go ahead and we can do an, an, another if statement and say if found equals true then I don't know, we could say we do ship to this zip code else we don't ship in this zip code something like that now before I run it to make it a, l a little bit more efficient like I said what if we typed in 
one zero 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 zero, and we were looking for this first. I mean, no, let's do the last one. Let's say I typed in six six seven seven eight nine, or five five six six seven seven. I mean, really any one. I want it to be efficient. I don't want it to. If it finds it like right here. I don't want it to keep on looking and looking and looking and checking every single one every time. We talked about this in a lecture, and I want it to be efficient and stop. Once it finds its its location, once it found the zip code inside the array, it should not keep on checking and going past it and checking for more because it already found it. You only can find one. There are no duplicates, so it can't find another one. So once you find it, I want it to stop there. And the way I tell you to do that is by adding this break after found equals true and that would make it a lot more efficient so if you found this one it won't check the eight other ones it will stop right there and then continue on which is a lot more efficient if you had you know thousands of elements and things like that so let's go ahead and run that so enter zip code five five four four three three we don't ship in the zip code and let's try one that we do one one five six seven we do ship to this zip code. So as you can see, we can now we made a, a program that's kind of practical that we can see what areas this company can ship their packages to, and maybe on a website if you're you know picking your location, it, it would be able to filter out what companies ship to this location and things like that. So it's starting to get a little practical.